Hi guys and welcome to the second part of the ultimate load box comparison. First of all, I have an update to the rating of the last video. While doing the next tests, I have noticed that the line out quality of the Fryat power station depends on the use of a balanced or unbalanced connection. The first test was made with the balanced means XLR line out. And as you can see here, this is the curve when using the regular unbalanced line out. No high cut, no low cut, it's simply perfect. Currently I'm not quite sure if the difference is hearable, however our goal is to find out which devices work best, so I don't want to ignore that fact and I will only use the unbalanced output for all coming tests. Please keep this in mind. So here's the updated rating of the first category. The Fryat power station goes to the first place when using the unbalanced line out. Today we will do a similar test but with a real cabinet connected. As you can see in the signal chain, I'm using the cabinet of my Koenig combo and put the load boxes in between the power amp and the speaker. The reference is the line out of the combo without any load box involved. As you can see in this diagram. Let's find out how close the line out signal of the load box is to the real deal. Some of the used load boxes have the ability to reduce the output level while keeping the tone unchanged. That's what the marketing claims. However, for having comparable conditions, I'm using the least amount of attenuation for each device. So the impact of a load box is as low as possible. First we have the AUX load box from Universal Audio. When we compare the line out of the amp with the line out of the load box, the resulting curve looks like this. There's a raise of 3 dB for frequencies below 50 Hz and there's a dent beginning at 200 Hz to 4 kHz for minus 1 dB. The deep high cut over 20 kHz can be ignored. Let's continue with the Sir reactive load. There's a low cut which starts at around 300 Hz. At 60 Hz it's minus 3 dB. The rest is pretty flat and looks good. So we only have some loss in the low end. Next we have the M central from RAD7. The resulting curve is not what I would call a flat line. The low end starts at around 700 Hz. At 60 Hz it's minus 3 dB and there's a little high cut of minus 1.5 dB starting at around 9 kHz. For the Torpedo Captor X we do a comparison for the low mode only because the high mode is not able to handle the power of the amp. So let's analyze the curve. There's a heavy high cut at around 16 kHz. It's minus 2 dB at 20 kHz. The low cut starts at around 700 Hz. At 60 Hz it's minus 7 dB, the middle section looks good. For the Fryat power station we do a comparison for the most extreme modes, means flat flat and deep edge. Let's start with the flat flat mode. Wow, that's a strange curve. The race of frequencies starts at 18 kHz and ends at 500 Hz at plus 9 dB. Then there's a minus 4 dB dent at 70 Hz. Let's see if the deep edge mode is any better. Hmm, there's also a dent at 60 Hz and a hill at 130 Hz. So that looks strange too and I will explain a little later what's happening here. For the Boss Tube Amp Expander we also do a comparison for the most extreme modes means low low and high high. Let's start with the low low mode. That's also a strange curve. The race of frequencies starts at 18 kHz 
and ends at 200 Hertz at plus 6 dB. There's also a minus 3 dB dent at 70 Hertz. Similar strange curve as the Fryette power station has. In the high high mode it does not look better or worse. It's different and also far away from being flat. Next we have the torpedo live from two nodes. The resulting curve looks very good. But there's a hard high cut starting at around 17 kHz. The range is 1.5 dB at 20 kHz. That's almost nothing for guitar sounds. The last device is the Iron Man 2 from Tone King. Hmm, the resulting curve looks not much better than in the first category. A high cut starts at 2 kHz and ends at 20 kHz over a range of 12 dB. That's pretty much the low cut of minus 3 dB starts at 40 Hz and is almost irrelevant. Before I will reveal my rating, let me explain why the curves of the Fryette power station and the Boss tube amp expander look so strange and out of line compared to the other curves. As you maybe know, both load boxes come along with power amps. This means that the speaker out of the load box belongs to the power amp of the load box. In other words, the original signal from the tube amp is not passed through the load box. It's completely decoupled. This concept has pros and cons. One pro is stepless control over the attenuated volume level. A con is that your tube amp works exclusively with the reactive load of the connected load box. Means your cabinet is invisible for your amp. This doesn't matter if the reactive load of your cabinet is equal to the reactive load of your load box. But in real life that's almost impossible. By the way, that's why the Fryette power station and the Boss tube amp expander have these additional switches. These allow you to change the reactive load of the load box to emulate a real cabinet. So the reason why the mentioned curves look so strange is that the reactive load of the reference signal that belongs to the combo speaker is completely different than the reactive load of the load box. Simply spoken, it's just like you are using the load box in silent mode, means without a cabinet. However, the Fryette power station is a little different because it also offers an option to pass the original amp signal through the load box. And this happens when the bypass mode is engaged. So your tube amp is able to see and react to the connected cabinet. Of course the mentioned switches do not work in bypass mode, but the line out still works properly. And here you can see how the resulting curve looks in bypass mode. It's simply perfect. So finally here's my rating for category B. Tonal neutrality with cabinet. The winner in this category is the Fryette power station in bypass mode because the result can't be better. Second place goes again to the underdog the Torpedo Life from two nodes. Place three goes to the Sir reactive load. Place four is the Ox load box from Universal Audio. Place 5 goes to the Amp Central from Red 7. Place 6 is the Torpedo Captor X from Two Nodes. Place 7, the last place, is again the Iron Man 2 from Tone King. The Boss Tube Amp Expander cannot be rated because the test scenario of this category is not supported at all. As you may have noticed, so far I've avoided to compare the source signal with the line out signal. The reason is because of its reactive nature, a cabinet has some impact on the amp tone. 
simply spoken, that's because a speaker is an inductive device which sends some voltage back to the power tubes of the amp while operating. This also means that using different cups may affect your tone because they send back a different amount of voltage depending on the used speakers. That's a technical fact and does not directly depend on the sound of the speaker or cabinet. Let me demonstrate this by comparing the amp line out with different cabinets connected. And keep in mind, no load box is involved in this test at all. Here you can see the signal of the combo speaker compared to the signal of my EVH cabinet. There's a notch at around 60 Hz, a big hill at around 130 Hz and kind of a negative high shelf starting at 2 kHz. Now let's compare a Marshall 1960AX cabinet with the EVH cabinet. These two cabinets are pretty close. The EVH has a small emphasis from 60 to 130 Hz. As you could see, the line-out curve depends on the connected cabinet. But what does this mean to our load boxes? In silent mode means no cabinet connected, each load box provides its own reactive load. It's just like your amp sees another cabinet. And this can affect your tone. This is also the reason why your amp can sound different by using a different load box. Even if you are using the same amp with the same settings and same IR. Another point is capturing your amp with a Kemper Tone X or Quad Cortex. In case you want to create a profile which is as close as possible to your rig, you shouldn't use a load box in silent mode. Make sure your amp is able to see your cabinet. If not, this does not necessarily mean that the created profile would not sound great. But if your amp sees only the reactive load of the load box, it might be a little different to your rig. Keep this in mind. All this measuring and comparison of curves are interesting, but what really counts in the end is the real tone. In the upcoming videos, I will feed each load box with different guitar sounds from different amps. The plan is to provide a video for each load box and in the final one, we will compare all sounds and other details to determine the overall winner. That's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe because this would help this channel a lot.